Hey everybody, it's Amanda from The Fundamental Home and today I am taking part in a collaboration started by Two Family Homestead. I'm gonna link their channel at the top. And they are of course friends that we met at Homesteaders of America conference. And the collaboration today is holiday dessert collaboration. Today I'm going to be making for you a dessert. I'm making a no-bake vegan chocolate pie. You're welcome. You can, you can eat a chocolate pie and almost feel good about it. Um, it's, it's obviously a dessert, it's not super healthy, but it's good for people like me who are on a special diet and uh, need to have some options that are still tasty and delicious. So I'm gonna show you how to make it and uh, we'll get started with the crust. Okay, so the crust just has two ingredients. Oreos, which if you were not aware, Oreos are vegan. You need 28 of them. I have them all here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. 28 Oreos. And then over here, you're going to need two ounces of butter, which is the equivalent of four tablespoons. This is my Earth Balance Vegan Butter. So we're gonna be using that, and we're gonna put all of that here in the food processor and get that ready, and that's gonna make our crust. Now, to have ready, you want to have pre-prepared a pie plate or you could also use a springform pan and have it buttered or oiled, whatever you want. You just want to have it uh, greased and ready to go once you get these Oreos together. So here it all is ready to go. I'm going to take the lid and put that on. do one-handed okay and we're gonna process this down until it's a nice consistency okay it stopped spinning and I don't know if you can see very close the crumbs how it's crummy but it's a little bit mushy it's nice and soft so we're actually gonna pour this out into our pie crust and form it around the edge to make our delicious pie crust for our pie. Don't forget to save some of the crumbs for the pie crust for the topping. So I have it all pressed in and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my pie crust and I'm gonna wrap it in some plastic and then I'm going to put it in my fridge and let it cool down for a little while while I prepare the filling. So we are on to step two and what we're gonna do is we're gonna melt some chocolate. I have about 10 ounces of chocolate and I made my own little double boiler. I'm gonna show you how I made it and how we're gonna melt the chocolate and we're also going to put a, a teaspoon of instant coffee into that chocolate while it melts and let that melt together. So we're gonna do that next, melt the chocolate, and then we are gonna let it cool down to room temperature before we go on to the next step. So here's my little double boiler I have set up, which is really just a pan that I have some water in, and I have a bowl that's bigger than that pan, and I put all the chocolate in here. I'm gonna let it start to melt a little bit before I add my instant coffee, um, but it'll take just a few minutes and then this will start to melt down and then we will add the coffee, stir it all together, and then let it cool. Okay, so it took just a couple minutes for it to get to about this stage, and this is about where I'm gonna take my teaspoon of instant coffee. It's a heaping teaspoon, but there we go. I'm gonna sprinkle that in, and then I'm gonna mix it, and when this melts down completely, let it cool to room temperature but it's looking good and it only took a couple of minutes. It really doesn't take very long at all. I took it off of the pan and we're just gonna let it sit here and cool down for a couple minutes to get it nice and, we want it to get down to room temperature but we don't want it to start to get solid again. So while this cools down, we'll get our other ingredients. Okay, so here's what we have. I went ahead and pulled our pie crust out I have my food processor. I've got some vanilla extract, some silken tofu, and some brown sugar. And we're going to mix all of that into the food processor. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna put in is your silken tofu. Now you need 
12 ounces of silken tofu. This one is 16 ounces, so we're gonna use about three quarters of the container. three tablespoons of brown sugar. You could also use um, maple syrup if you would like, but I'm all out. So brown sugar it is. And three. And of course the sugar is to taste. Um, I use a very dark chocolate, but if you um, have less of a dark chocolate or you prefer a more dark chocolate flavor, the sugar is totally up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this off. I'm gonna get all the chocolate in there that I can. And we're just gonna process this. Look how creamy that is. It looks so good. I actually had to use the spatula here and scrape it down once, but it looks really creamy. So all we're gonna do is take this and put it into our pie crust and then put that in the fridge and let that sit for a little while. Okay, so we have poured the chocolate into the crust. We're gonna sprinkle our leftover crust pieces for topping, and uh, then we're gonna be done. Let me show you what it looks like. Here is our beautiful pie. See, all we did was spread out the uh, chocolate filling and we sprinkled it, sprinkled that extra crust on the top, and it looks beautiful. Now you wanna put this pie in the fridge for probably another hour or so just to get it nice and firm, and then it's ready to serve. This is perfect for all of your holiday guests. And you can serve it knowing that your vegan friends can have a delicious dessert. Another option for you, um, there is a Ready Whip that is made with both almond milk and coconut milk. I've not had either one, but I've had it recommended that the almond milk uh, is very good. And I think the almond milk would probably taste excellent with these flavor combinations that we have happening here. Another thing you can do is you could add in half a cup of peanut butter and make it a peanut butter pie. Uh, if you do that, you wanna add a little bit of almond milk to it because it'll be just, just a tad bit too thick. Um, but anyway, we're gonna put this in the fridge and it's gonna be ready. So I hope this was uh, a good recipe for you. I know there's a lot of folks out there who are having uh, holiday dinners and they have people with different dietary needs. And we wanna make sure we support with everyone with their different dietary needs and provide something for them. Oh, by the way, you can make this gluten-free as well. What I recommend you do for that is to make a graham cracker crust. There's lots of great uh, recipes on Pinterest, but using gluten-free graham crackers. So when I make um, something like this for Ricky, that's usually what I do. So um, anyway, lots of great options for you out there. I hope you guys find something. Don't forget to check down in the description box because I'm gonna have a link to all the other folks who are making great desserts for this for holiday dessert collaboration that we're doing with Two Family Homestead. Make sure you go check them out, tell them I sent you, and uh, wish them a very merry holiday season. So that's it. You all have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm really glad you came to visit us here at the Fundamental Home. Make sure if you enjoyed this video that you click the like button, and also click subscribe right below me for more videos coming into your inbox all the time. And also, if you enjoy social media, we've got links up at the top here for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all the other fun things. And check out thefundamentalhome.com for more information about what we're doing all the time and how we do it, because there's way more details there. And uh, here, over to the right, we have some videos that I recommend. So thanks again for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye!